Hello everyone, Wangjo here, and welcome back to the Musilon campaign for Mortal Empires. Now today we're starting with the defense of Knight's Pass, as Cassion de Paravon has brought an army to attack its walls. Now, in terms of the army composition, I'm not worried about a lot of the main force itself. The ace in the hole that they have is Cassion, and he is going to be a pain in the butt, simply because we don't actually have any real units capable of taking him on. So the best I could do is maybe try and swamp him using our Graveguard, and try and defend the walls at the same time, but we'll wait and see how it goes down on the battlefield itself. So see you guys down there. Here we are then guys, upon the gates of Night's Pass, as we watch the enemy force marching towards the walls. Now, I set things up pretty similar to how we did last time we fought in Helmgart, or Night's Pass, with most of my infantry, like the Graveguard, along the top of the walls. I've put a unit with great weapons down here, just in case, and I've set up my knights on either side of the settlement, ready to charge in when needed. As we wait though for the enemy to start advancing, you can see we started some initial attacks using our towers and the poisoned arrows from our peasant bowmen. But the enemy right now is just charging all of their infantry up. And looking now at this battle, I realize why the battle pilgrims did surprisingly well against my grave guard. I'm just looking at their stats, and look at that 41-32 for a melee attack. Compare that to my Grave Guard here, who are anti-infantry by the way, and it's 26-36. Yeah, they're not that different when it comes to melee defense, and melee attack is just better. But anyway, the wall the ladders come up on the walls first, and the battle pilgrims and men at arms start making their way up the ladders. Over here near the gatehouse, Cassian comes and attacks my bowmen. I start pulling them out as soon as I realize this was happening, and after having a quick look along the walls to see where the enemy is trying to scale, I send a lot of my troops then, like the Grave Guard here, as well as um, other ones around the place to basically try and tra trap Cassian. So while he's doing that, we're also going to be setting up our bowmen to start firing poisoned arrows in into him to try and weaken him up a bit. Down here near the gates, I noticed that um, you know men at arms have been trying to bash down the gates themselves. So I sent in the grave guard unit I had nearby just in case. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in too much because of the way the gates work. But you can see that we are doing a ton of damage to them already. Their health is lowered dramatically in that short period of time. But they're still going to be hanging on in there, bless them. As we continue along here, then you can see the enemy has been able to take advantage of me sending my forces to deal with Cassian. So we've got, you know, men at arms scaling up along here. Over here, the battle with this, you know, Grave Guard is not going too well against the Battle Pilgrims. They've only managed to kill a couple, though, so I'm actually wondering, looking at the numbers, how they managed to kill so many. Yeah, because look at that. These have killed 10, they've killed 11. I suppose this one might be helping as well, but they only killed seven. Yet, okay, maybe I'm looking at this wrong. I'm looking at the numbers. And yeah, we've got 90 casualties left, but we lost half the health of the unit. Right. This one I was doing much better, so I'm happy about that. You can see, though, at this point, we're now firing our arrows into the <laughs> Cassion, and you can see the trebuchets blasting down. I realized we had very little health left with this unit, so what I decided to do, because we had a lack of targets thanks to the position I had with the trebuchets up here, I ended up firing all that jumping around. I ended up firing the, uh, the trebuchets straight into this unit of men at arms. Some of them are actually catching the, um, well, the men at arms and the pilgrims over here, and inflicted a few casualties on my own grave guard, but it's just one of those things. On this side, we've just got a unit of peasant bowmen just been firing away, doing a ton of damage to this unit of uh, uh, Knights of the Realm. We've got others around that have been taking some damage from the towers and that, but generally, things are just be being left to their own devices, really. Just to showcase what's happening down in the gatehouse, we've actually got a horse running rampant <laughs> in the gate itself, but at this point, the men at arms have decided to retreat. We're not chasing them down with our grave guard because, well, I didn't want to. So we're pulling them back in and we're going to be sending them off in a minute to actually try and help with the situation on the gates. Because if we swing around to the gates so we can sing a little better, 
Cassio's doing extremely well. We've knocked him down quite a bit. So he's now at less than half health. If the mouse would let me still give him a shot. But he's killed 66 of my grave guard. We are tiring as time goes on. And one thing I didn't realize for a little while is that he's actually regenerating health. So I, I don't know what's actually causing that. And I can't unfortunately click on him to find switch this over. But yeah, he's regenerating health during the battle. So yeah, I wasn't expecting that. But it keeps him alive a little bit longer anyway. If we switch over to this side though, you can see now we've got some men at arms retreating into the settlement. Others are still on the walls. We still bombard them with our trebuchets when we remember to do so. As well as the arrow fire we've got from... Oh, hang on. Oh no, it's from this unit here. I forgot all about my mounted peasant archers. They've just been firing away, pickling away with their arrows when they can. And I forgot all about them, to be honest, in this fight. They do help out a little bit later on, but generally they're just firing away. Still got my trebuchets in position with a bunch of ammo. They're just being very slow to fire right now. Eventually they remember that's what they need to do, and you can see them in the distance, about to we arm and ready to fire. Unfortunately though, we've now lost this section of the wall. All we've got left is this unit of grave guard who's luckily hanging on in there. To be fair though, if I zoom in a little bit, I notice a lot of their troops actually aren't fighting the battle pilgrims. <laughs> oh dear me, oh dear. Anyway, if we pop back to Cassian, we can s where is Cassian in fact? He's over here. We've knocked down some more health, but he's managed to kill a hundred of my troops this time. And it's just causing more and more casualties. It's getting harder and harder for me to get rid of them. And I am trying to send troops in, like you can see this unit of Grave Guard with great weapons. But they're just sort of just standing around here. Only willing to come in one at a time, or a couple at a time. Making them very easy pickings for Cassian on his Hippogriff. But, you know, it's one of those things. We are trying our best. We've got more ladders now coming up on the walls. This time now it's from the enemy bowmen. They spend a lot of their time firing on my position. And I think it was partly their arrows that was uh, contributed towards that unit of Grave Guard right here being defeated. But they're now going to try and make it up and they're going to be in for a rough time. Because they picked the section of the wall with all my Grave Guard on. Which, even though they've been busy fighting Cassian, they're still going to be more than capable of taking on some peasant bowmen in combat, you know? How's it looking over here now, by the way? Still going okay. These guys are still hanging on and they're still doing some casualties. The annoying thing is we haven't actually encountered much down on the walls here. We've seen enemies retreating and starting to shatter in this case. But my knights that I've had set up ready to receive any enemy attacks have just been sitting around wasting their time really. Not really much else for them to do. Likewise on this side we've got another two units just sort of sitting there waiting for the enemy to charge through the gate. But because we've killed all the infantry at this point, apart from a couple of units of bowmen, they do eventually decide to send out their Knights of the Realm, but they're not doing a lot of damage against the gates. I don't know if in Warhammer it's something to do with the type of weapon they have, because in previous games like Thrones of Britannia and Attila, Axe troops are better at attacking enemy gates than sword troops, which are better than doing it with spearmen. So I don't know if lances actually make a difference when it comes to attacking the gates or not, but they're not doing much luck over there anyway. Now, if we switch back over here a minute, I'm going to have to learn to be a bit more smoother with the camera controls. We are still trying to wear him down, but he's killed 149 of my troops and counting. We do have some troops now making their way down. My grave guard have come to intercept. I think I was actually bringing these guys up to try and help out over the, on the walls. But luckily for us, we managed to pin them in place easily enough. We also got a unit over here, if the game would let me. Some so men at arms. One thing I'm trying to look out for in this fight is I actually came close to losing. And it's because somehow a unit of battle pilgrims managed to make their way. In fact, is that the unit right here, maybe? No, that's that one. There's a little red dot here. I'm trying to spot where they are. How strange. They're, oh, right, they're shattered. These guys are not. But this is in the unit. 
There's a unit of pilgrims that basically managed to make their way into the centre courtyard and uh, capture the points. And the game didn't tell me until I had like nearly a hundred points left. So it was a case of trying to march my yeoman as quickly as I can to get over there. But I didn't get there in time for me to be able to chase down a lot of the enemy. But we managed to win the battle first. So, in case you want to know what happens in that case, it just means you can't chase the enemy down after that point. The game considers it a draw straight away. But anyway, continuing on a bit more. As you can see, my bowmen have basically run out of fire right now. The trebuchets are charging away, managing to hit over the walls to go after the Knights of the Realm units. And for the most part, they're just sort of standing around. They're getting pot shots from the tower hitting them. But between their armor and their shields, they're really not doing much against them. The main the part of the fight though is just going on right here, where we managed to get, well, chip down Cassian's health to about here. But as I hover over here, you can see that we're not actually doing that much for him. A lot of my troops are just standing around. So when actually he's watching him pretty much stay constant with his regeneration of health and the amount of damage we're doing to him, so it's not really ideal, and it just means he's killing more and more troops um, without us doing much in return. So eventually, I sort of figured to myself, right, I'm having enough of this. He's not really willing to retreat, even though you can see his leadership has jumped down to 13. So after he's inflicted a few more casualties, what I ended up trying to do was actually fire at him with my trebuchet. But it's not going to be the most ideal of things. But we've got a few more minutes to wait right now, so I'm just going to skip forward a little bit and show you what happens later on. So here we are a little bit later. Cassian is still going on strong. We've barely done any more damage to him. He's managed to cause quite a few more casualties to us. Down here, you can see the gates have opened because we had this Knights of the Realm unit trying to smash her down. I sent the unit you know, a graveguard to try and, and kill them. Managed to do a fair bit of casualties, but uh, they've decided to pull back a little bit. But if we ha stay on here a minute, yeah, that was just, I was getting annoyed. So at this point, like I said, started to find my trebuchet straight into uh, Cassion himself. I'm trying to get my grave guard off the walls so we don't hit them. But unfortunately, thanks to the models deciding to stay on the wall, it meant that some of the units weren't willing to actually leave. They were just running off a little bit and then running back up. I should see bodies falling off the wall right now. That's cool. But yeah, we're still firing away, trying our best to do some damage, but we managed to do a bit more luck with the trebuchet at least. But it's just quite annoying, the fact that we're trying to deal with this. But eventually then, I caught on to an idea. I figured the other reason we can get our troops down here, apart from trying to shoot him with the trebuchet, is don't forget we do have four units of knights just waiting to attack something. And they've been waiting here for the entire battle. So at this point now, Cassian is starting to pull up. He's turning around. He's going to go after our units of Graveguard, which I'm pulling back to the ramp. And as soon as he lands, it's, we're just going to charge in with every single knight unit. So you can see them coming in from this side, in fact. And we're bringing them in from this side too. And we're just going to watch him fade away very, very quickly. If I hover over here a minute... You can see exactly what happens. His health is going up. That first charge is going to do some damage. Some more charges coming in. And very quickly, his health is just plummeting right now. To the point where, just like that, he dies. Or gets wounded. Ugh. If I only had thought to do that sooner, we could have saved the lives of... Well, we could save the corpses of a few more Graveguard, couldn't we? Now these guys tried doing some more damage, but luckily for me their low morale was enough with the well wounding of Cassian to get them to drive away. And at this point though, the enemy is kind of stuck. They don't really know what to do. They can keep trying to attack the gates using their knights, but it's just going to take a long time. And at this point, I'll be honest with you guys, I was getting bored. This is not actually the first time I fought the battle, either, to be honest. I actually fought this battle, won it, and then what ended up happening was the game crashed, doing the loading screen to get back to the campaign map. So, yeah, I already fought this battle once, and it was just as long as this one's turned out to be. So, yeah, I was just impatient. Although now, I can actually spot that unit I was talking about, the Battle Pilgrims. So, checking it out here. 
this brave unit of six men, I think it is. Yeah, seven, sorry. They managed to capture the <laughs> at my courtyard. So, like, and like I said, the game didn't actually bother to tell me that they were capturing it. So, I was leaving them alone while my black knights basically try to charge through to push these knights of the realm away. Now, if I swing back out a second, you can see their numbers are going to start dwindling any second. But, luckily for me, this unit doesn't actually inflict any casualties. Instead, we just watch them stand there as the occasional thrust from a Black Knight kills another one and drops them down again and again and again. But let things try and speed up a little bit, or at least as much as they do while I play the game. You can see the casualties going down bit by bit by bit. Their leadership is going to start dwindling eventually, but for the moment it is actually halfway around 17. It uh, drops down to two, inflict more and more casualties, to, uh, pushing them back away from the gate through sheer mass, pretty much. But it won't be too long then until they start wavering and they're going to start retreating like so. Once they've done that, then we're going to start summoning, well, pulling out all of our knights and chasing down at whatever we can. So we've got a few knights of the realm over here, for example. We've got some more that was here. <laughs> But the main thing we're trying to actually chase down at this point is actually the Grail Reliquies. Because they're that weird choice of units where they can't actually climb up on the walls. They don't actually do a ton of damage in combat, so they've just been standing around until my knights came out. Although, you can see here now, the uh, countdown has started for us. And by the time it actually remind, tells me it's about 100, I'm thinking, oh crap, what's going on? I couldn't actually see the units because, well, they've disappeared over here. So it's just like, oh crap, here it is. I need to get my for some forces into the courtyard. So I was trying to actually get my unit of yeomen, which I've sent out here. You can spot them right here. They got caught, unfortunately, by the units of, well, some Knights of the Realm that were here originally before the Grail Reliquary turned up. So they've taken a few casualties, but it's okay. But in the meantime, I'm trying to get my Graveguard here to run it forward, but they're not exactly the fastest units in the game, are they? So, continue to question my Yeoman, eventually they get the hint and start making their way in. But they've only got a minute to try and make their way around, and it's not going to really get there in time. But luckily for me, we've managed to kill them and get them to shatter. So at this point, really, I was just chasing down the survivors until that countdown hit zero, which the game ended straight away with a pyrrhic victory but we managed to keep knight's pass under our control despite what that says and so i feel pretty happy to go back to the campaign map well i tell you that was one long long battle but we managed to get through it in the end with a pyrrhic victory we lost a couple of units, but it's a garrison force, so we'll be able to get them back pretty easily. But in return, we managed to wipe out the entire enemy force, including Cassion, which I was very proud about. But, anyway, let's have a look. What do we want to do? I'm not too worried about any more enemies coming to attack us until we replenish. So let's go ahead and return the captives, get a bit of extra dark magic coming in. And see what comes next in this campaign turn. Okay, so Dural Durak has come to attack us at Languil. And I have to say, looking at his army, I'm a little concerned. <laughs> I mean, look at some of the units he's got in this force. I mean, we've seen some of them before, like the Hearthgar, the Druid Neophytes and that. But he's got things like, what's this? The fly-infested Rotwood, Fen Beasts. They got zealots and trebuchets. Oh, Christ almighty. Okay, well, I'd rather not lose Languil if we can avoid it. So we're going to have to fight a battle. This is going to be a tough one. Okay, let's give it a go. Welcome everyone to the second defense of Languil, where Malabad once again is facing the forces from Albion. Now, I'm going to take a minute to just show off the new units that we haven't encountered yet from Albion. Because watching them in the battlefield, they were really, really cool. And we've got plenty of time in this because I'm the one who's going to have to make the attack thanks to the enemy having the stone throwers. But why don't I just farve around? First of all, look at these guys. These are the warriors of Lu, which in Celtic lore 
was a god of light. So it's very fitting these guys have got fiery swords and stuff like that. Very cool, you know? If we zoom across then here, you can see the Albion Giant. He looks very distinct, doesn't he, with the road painted on him and that. Especially that beard. That looks really, really cool. I didn't actually see much of him in the actual battle, but seeing him here right now, it looks really nice. Hmm. Back behind him then, we have the enemy stone throwers. This is the reason why I was encouraged to attack them, but luckily for me, they weren't the most accurate thing in the world, and they decided to focus a lot of their attacks initially on Malabad, just making things much, much easier for us when it came to the, the actual assault. Now you'll see in the distance there's actually some arrow fire going on. This is because I forgot to move the Doom Reliquy behind my line. So the Horse Art Warriors here took the opportunity to charge forward to try and do some early damage. I countered attack with my arrowmen to just do a ton of damage to them in return. And oh, oh yeah, we just used Awakening of the Wood, I remember. But realizing that the enemy wasn't going to come towards us, we slowly start marching our force towards him. But that gives me time though to focus on the other units the enemy has at their control. So the first Bill and Sons we've seen before, the Druid Neophytes, I don't think we've seen these guys yet. But they look kind of cool, they do remind me very much of the Druid units from Rome 1. So yeah, that was quite cool to see. Got some more Warband, there was the Hearthguard, but the ones I want to check out were the monsters. So this was the fly infested Watward, the Fen Beasts we caught saw. God, they look creepy, don't they? Look very fitting for the fact they're just a bog, you know? Bog tree warriors. If we continue along here, we've got the young bloods. I think we see these guys before. Oh, don't worry about that, that's just the catapult. Here we've got the centaurs. And I like the fact that while they've probably been modelled on the Sensigors, they do look very distinct. In some ways, they look a bit like the Dragon Ogres. At least that's the impression I'm getting. But obviously on horse instead. That's really cool. The Zoas. Look how cool these guys look. Really, really cool. And especially with that little magical touch. Some Zoats, if I remember right, had some magical... You know, oh, in fact, you can see them there. Spellcasters. I was just too busy focusing on trying to kill them doing that battle, to be honest with you guys. But, uh, yeah, that was good. Another Awakening of the Wood over there as I'm trying to just do a bit more damage to someone. I tried to actually kill off Morrigan. Because he, she was still around from the previous fight and badly injured. So I thought, if I can kill her off with some Awakening of the Woods early on, that's going to help us out massively. But, unfortunately, that didn't quite work. She wasn't taking much damage from it, so I presume the Awakening of the Wood isn't that good against single characters. But it's okay, she'll be a target for our archers eventually. Now if we zoom a little bit over here, you can see I'm starting to cast some spells, like this one we've got the Voice of Command. In fact, who was using that? That must have been from either Duval Duvac or the Morrigan, because I thought I was using a healing spell over here, to be honest. Huh. Anyway. The last unit I forgot to point out is actually Dural Dirac himself. You can see him just behind the charioteer right there, very cool. Giant, of course, is coming in to try and help out against Malo- oh, bad. And it was mainly because of the giant, I was thinking to myself, oh crap, this is not really the fight for Malabad. So I ended up pulling him out just before the lines charged together. And it's not going to be a good day to be that men at arms unit. This is from the garrison, by the way, which is why it hasn't got a name. Oh wow, just look at that charge from Dural Dirac, just butchered his way right through. And again, for good measure, against the second company of the Musilon's mutants. Wow. Now to try and pin him in place, I've sent Molabad in to actually attack him. And Bolgas is on the frontier, just to double team him. I mean, he's got two men in the chariot, I think it's only fair we get two units of our own. And that's going to be Malabad and Bolga's main job, is just to go and deal with them. Over on our left flank then, we've got a unit of the Eternal Eventry that's already killed off a bunch of the enemy's horsemen on this side. And we're bringing them in now to try and provide some reinforcement for the Rose Lances. They've been going after the Warriors of Lu. We've also got two units of the Disgruntled right here that have been doing some damage to some another ha cavalry units. But I wanted to try and clear up the left flank as much as possible so we can start bringing things in to help secure the centre. 
Now the stone throwers were an easy target for my crypt ghouls as well as some units of the Musilan's mutants. And if we swing over to the right over here, you can see we've got the Zoets just hammering away at another unit of Musilan mutants as well as some polearm troops. I did have some Black Knights, the Rusted Blades, trying to support, but they were busy trying to help deal with a warband with great weapons right here. And I believe the other one actually started chasing after an enemy unit all the way over here. So I ended up having to bring them back to try and help clear things up and start getting them to get involved. The thing is, I remember now with Men at Arms that they're not the most reliable troops, so we get a couple of times when these guys started pulling back, not surprisingly considering in the center they are fighting a giant after all, as well as other creatures like the Hearthguard and that. And now I actually get to spot what was happening to the Doom Willow Creep. I, had, I saw at the end of the battle, slight spoiler, that this is the only unit we lost and I actually forgot about it completely in the battle. And uh, now I know what I was doing before I died. <laughs> Anyway, the Eternal Infantry charge in now to provide some support over here. And behind them then basically we're securing everywhere else on the battlefield. There's still some units around like the Javelins and that. I'll be soon sending arrows, as you can just see, to try and whittle them down a bit. The mutants are basically just hanging around here ready to try and finish off the Albion stone throwers. We've got Dual Durak over here. We actually managed to get him to retreat at one point. So I was actually sent in, I sent Malabad into the center battle here, where Borgas though was left unoccupied, and given that he is anti-infantry, I thought it might be best to actually send Malabad to send him, to finish him off. So you can see the attack order I'm doing with Malabad, he's charging through using Foe Seeker to increase his speed. He just managed to catch up though with Borgas, but yeah I didn't realize it's actually going to reasonably well for him, and we're just charging again, getting him to retreat this time. Unfortunately, his speed is actually quite sp speedy. I mean, 96 on his chariot compared to uh, Malabad's uh, 75. So, yeah, he was able to get off the battlefield. But as he's broken, though, the, you can see things have started to rout massively. The Fen Beasts here in the center have just finished disintegrating. And we just spend the rest of the battle then chasing down the remaining troops. I got my archers firing away at the giant, for example. We're going to see him collapse any minute. And then it was just a case of letting my cavalry finish off the enemy as much as we can. Some of them, like the Hearthguard here, managed to get a couple of people off and the Druid Neophytes, which are somewhere over here, in fact. Can't really spot where they are. Oh, here they are. Most of their unit, though, has managed to be about here. So we managed to... They managed to get their way off. But there we go. Giant goes bye-bye. <laughs> and... There we go, the victory is mine. So let's go back to the campaign map and tally up the final casualty list. Well, that turned out quite nice. A close victory. We lost none of the units apart from the Doom Reliquy, but to be honest with you guys, I actually forgot about it after I mucked up at the beginning. So yeah, I'm not really surprised I lost it. But it doesn't matter, can you replace it with something else? Just want to have a look at the kills from here though. The archers actually didn't do too bad. I mean, they only got 27 and 16, but they did a ton of damage. They killed the giants. So, yeah, I'm quite impressed with them. Now, what do I want to do with the captives? All 161. We could release them. We could dominate them. I'm going to go ahead and dominate them. We could have gone for the extra dark magic, admittedly, but. I'm hoping now we'll be able to chase down Dual Durak with Malabad and wipe him out. Although I just noticed, why have I only got 17 out of 20? Oh, hang on. Well, Kassin was injured in the previous fights. We lost the Doom Reliquy, didn't we? And I had only 19 units in his army at the time. Because I was talking about moving him down to pick up a trebuchet. So, right, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, Polos, you're trying again. I didn't show this in the last episode, but this guy had tried a couple of times to attack Kuyan, and it just hasn't worked out too well for him. But every time, something survives, you know? Now you can see here that because of perhaps the dead risers, he'll be able to retreat despite taking all, you know, complete casualties in that fight. <laughs> anyway, that's him dealt with. 
He'll try and attack next turn. Don't you worry. Right. Refugees of war. Oh, the Von Karsteins want to join us. Oh. Sure. Who ended up joining us? Because they have Vlad or Isabel. So I hope we get both of them. Uh, Crone, okay. Legendary Lord, Vlad. With the Von Karsteins of Westervania being defeated, the legendary Vlad Von Karstein, first of the Khan Von Karsteins, is willing to join his brethren at another chance to consolidate his power. Well, he's going to be waiting because now he's playing second fiddle to the Red Duke. But we didn't pick up Isabel. Or did we? We'll find out in a second. Let's just pop for all of these. Let's have a quick look. Uh, Legendary Lords. We've got Nicolette, Helmand Gost, Manfred. Oh, we do have Isabel. And Vlad, right. Okay, that's fine. We've got a few turns to wait before we can use any of them anyway. But I'm happy with the forces we're currently building over here in Zufpa. So we've got a bunch. I still want to try and get mainly power arms. But we're waiting a little bit longer before we can actually get them. So, how long have I got? One more turn. That's fine. Alright, Dragon Half. Yeah, we'll keep that. Might as well try and get a little bit more economy going. Valden Half will do the same, actually. We'll go this time, though, Snail Hunting for you. And uh, we'll get through this one turn, and then we'll bring the episode to an end, because we've had one hell of an end turn phase. Ah, right. Definitely want to see about upgrading that if we're going to have to be facing battles there again. You, luckily for us now, Duarte Rack and Adam Morgan have been defeated completely. So we can just go over there, wipe them out. So what I'm actually tempted to do with the Red Duke is go after here. What's going to be the best place to go? You dishonor me. Oh wow, you've got a ton of units. Not in this world or the other. Right, what do they actually have in Grunzint? So they got the Grail Chapel, that's why they've been getting Battle Pilgrims and Grail Eloquies. But I have no idea where they've been getting these Knights of the Realm from, because they can't recruit it from any of these buildings. Strange. Very strange. Well, no matter, we'll just go and kill them off. Alright, what I'll do though is I'll come around this way, because Corian's territory stretches down to here, so from there now we'll be able to just swing up towards Gwenzint and take it out easily enough. So we'll cont Oh, actually, stop. Tell you what, while we're passing by, let's destroy the orc army here. Nasha Badax. There we go, goodbye. Although speaking of orcs, if you guys haven't checked it out yet and you're a fan of the tabletop, Faya, did you check out Warhammer Fest last week? And what did you think? Is there anything that particularly jumped out at you? I mean, I have to be honest, I felt a little, I don't know, underwhelmed by it all. Simply because they've already been revealing stuff like the new Soulblight Gravelords, the new orcs that were coming out and stuff like that. So it wasn't like anything like... I was hoping to have something a bit more like wow we like if they told me oh wow the Eldar are going to be re-released now I would have jumped at that but obviously that wasn't going to happen because they've already been talking about the orcs and the sisters of battle and stuff like that but the news about the new Age of Sigmar coming out this summer is going to be interesting and hopefully by then I'll actually get my daughters of Cain and well the soul blights eventually done but for now, let's go over here and kill off the last of the Aldorax army. Goodbye. There we go, nice and straightforward. We will just murder the captives this time. We could actually have you just go over here and kill this guy off. Now, let's get you marching back. What we'll do then is in the next turn, we'll move him into Artois. So by now, we should have, yep, our trebuchets. I would ideally like to upgrade them so we can get the unholy trebuchets, but we're not going to be able to get them anytime soon. That's okay, it's just one of those things. But you can now replenish. Is there any units we can try and add to your force while we're waiting? We could actually jump and get the Doom Equi back again. <laughs> oh, I don't know. 
I'm gonna actually try something a little different. I'm gonna go for the Hungry. Because the Doom Reliquary was okay in that, but I'm gonna try something a little different with these guys. So there, that's that. Alright, so you've moved, you've moved. William is still in the middle of recruiting, so we're not gonna do anything yet. Although... If we can move him over towards here, in fact, it should work, even if we just move into the region. So if we move here and raise the dead, what do we have access to? So we could already give him knights and Raylan hags, okay. And a bunch of skellies. I wouldn't mind, again, some spearmen, but then we also want some more men-at-arms. I'll tell you what, well, let's grab some black knights. I think it could be quite fitting to get some crypt ghouls. So I'll grab some of those as well. Yeah. We'll do something like that. Then we'll get a bunch of men-at-arms. And then... Yeah. We'll see where we go from there. So you can head back. Over here. And we'll be able to get you your troops in the following turn. So we've... Uh, is there anything we actually want to upgrade here? Um, I think we're okay now, actually. Let's move you back down towards Drakenhof. We'll upgrade the coaching in, sure. Everything else is fine. Let's continue moving you over towards Tempelhof then. Because we've got a bunch of buildings we can do there. Unless there's something else elsewhere. Let's have a quick look. Alright, Ubersweik is fine. Knight's Pass has been upgraded. Paravon is doing the landmark building, which will give us immunity to mountain attrition. Quillis could be upgraded. Let's go and get that. That would give us Walls of the Settlement too. And tell you what, that could be upgraded. Sure. Massive Orko, we'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, Kuyon. I did want to try and get my hands. Oh no, we already got one of those. Right, what did I want to try and get my hands on here? I can't remember. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what, let's go for training fields. Or even better yet. Better yet. Let's get a barrow. That way then we can upgrade this, and that will give us access to a bunch of troops. Sh oh no, let's actually upgrade Langrill. That way then we can actually get proper defenses there, finally. Okay, Aquitaine, let's give you a training field. Defenses and upgrade for that. And Musilano, I need to give you something eventually. Because I end up getting rid of that building just for me to want to rebuild it again. So, yeah, we'll come back to that. Okay. Level ups. Mina. Mina, 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 Mina. Alright, let's give you your final points in the fate of Buna. Okay, Bulgars. I kind of like the idea of actually giving him a warhorse this time. But I think it would be best if we continue working on his combat abilities. We can come back to the horse later. So let's go Deadly Blade could be useful. I think Extra Armor would be useful. We'll go for that. Okay, Lorraine. I definitely want to give you a Barded Warhorse and we'll do that next turn. Because she came very close then. I'd rather be able to get her away as fast as we can. Right, let's go for the Earthen and the Dwellers below. Okay, Malabad. We c oh yeah, we already got you the Banner of the Serpent. We get this at level 12. Okay. A few more turns since we can get you Unyielding Wheel. Okay, that's fine. Let's in continue to increase your Lobel Militia. Okay, Aiden is fine. We'll just move you up here. Okay, Vindrick, let's just continue leveling you up by going after this. Success. Very good. Alright, we'll get you to damage the walls this time and block the army. Right, and uh, last little thing I wanted to do is check out Diplomacy. So, Bama Legion, we're pretty good terms with. Will we. We could eventually try and confederate, but I want them to get a bit weaker first. What about the Blood Dragons? Our relationship with them is improving. Are they willing to consider? They are. 
Alright, I'll tell you what, I will just accept that as it is. Because if we can confederate with these guys, that gives us a nice little bit of territory over here. It's only one region, but it will be their home region, so I'm quite happy to take blood keep for myself. And then, yeah, that's it, end turn. So, with a rather uneventful end turn phase, I think we can safely bring today's episode to an end. And I can tell you, I could do with a bit of a break after those two battles. So guys, let's end it here with a thank you very much for enjoying today's episode, and I do hope you did enjoy it, with all the battles we had to face. And you do join me next time, of course, for some more Warhammer. Like I said, let me know in the comments if you checked out Warhammer Fest for the tabletop and what your thoughts on it. Otherwise, take care everybody, stay safe, and goodbye for now.